Some say now that we have some ifs, count ifs, average ifs, etc., that some product is, dare I say it, redundant. <gasps> but that would be a mistake because pro Excel users know that some product is one of Excel's most versatile functions and it can do things you can't do with those functions. Look, it's not perfect. There are some pitfalls to watch out for, which I'll cover at the end, so stay tuned. Imagine you run a small bookstore. You have various genres of books, each sold at different prices and sold in different quantities each month. Our data set looks like this, and we can use the sum product function to find the total revenue for the month by referencing the units sold and the price. Now it's important that the arrays are the same size, otherwise you'll get an error. Close some product and we get the total. Some product multiplies one array by the other and then sums up the values, essentially performing the same calculation in a single cell that it took all these cells to achieve the same result. That's the standard way some product was designed to be used, but Excel pros know how to exploit its ability to handle arrays without requiring nested functions and special keystrokes like Control shift enter Come on. Let's say you want to find out the revenue for books priced above $15 and which sold more than 85 units. We can use logical tests inside some product to identify which rows to include in the array. We wrap the logical tests in parentheses and the first logical test is whether the units sold are greater than 85. Close parentheses on that one. For AND criteria, we multiply logical tests. So we put in the multiplication sign and then open the parentheses for our next logical test, which is whether the price is greater than 15. Close parentheses on my second logical test. We then multiply the units sold by the price, close parentheses, and we get the result 6,370. If we step through the formula up here in the formula bar, I'll F9 to evaluate, you can see the first logical test returns an array of Boolean true and false values, as does the second one. And then when we multiply those true and false values by one another, they convert into their numeric equivalent of one and zero. And we end up with an array of the rows that we want to keep, which are ones, and the rows that we don't want to keep or include in the total, which are zero. And then when we multiply those values by the arrays of units sold and price, the second record is discarded because it's all multiplied by zero. So that's how the sum product is working behind the scenes. It's similar to sum ifs, except with sum product, you don't need the intermediary values in column E in order to calculate it. Now, what if we want to calculate the revenue for books priced above $20 or which sold more than 100 units? Again, sum product. This time we have to be careful we don't double count rows where both criteria are met. So looking at the table, you can see that the sci-fi genre sold more than 100 units and its price is greater than 20. So this one would be double counted because both criteria are met. So to avoid this error, we can wrap the logical tests in the sign function. The sign function returns a one for a positive value, zero for zeros, and negative values are converted to minus one. So we're essentially eliminating any chance of double counting. Here, my first logical test, whether the units sold are greater than 100. And we're adding the logical test because this is all criteria. And whether the price is greater than 20. Close parentheses on my second logical test, close sign. And then all I need to do is multiply that by the two arrays, close some product, and we get 5,000. Now, if I evaluate the logical tests, let's take a look. We get false, true, true, false. And then we're adding to the next logical test, false, false, true, false. So if we evaluate both of them, we get the first one's discarded, the second one we want to keep, the third one we want to keep, but we need to fix that with sign so it's not two, it's one. Because if we left it at two, we're going to double count that row. So sign then converts them to ones and zeros, which are then multiplied by our two arrays to return 5,000. Now, if your logical tests are only applied to one column, for example, if you wanted to sum whether the genre is sci-fi or mystery, then there's no risk of double counting. So you don't need the sign function, but there's also no harm in using it, just so you don't forget to use it in future. 
As the months roll by, you keep track of the sales of each genre by date. This month, your data now looks like this. And you want to find the revenue for books sold after the 2nd of September. So again, some product. Now here we only have one logical test. So we need to coerce the Boolean values into their true and false equivalents. And we can do that with the double unary, which is just two negative signs. Then our logical test is whether the dates here are greater than, and I'm just going to use the date function to input my date. So whether the dates are greater than the 2nd of September, close parentheses on my logical test. And then all I need to do is select the unit sold times the price, close some product, and there's my result. So far we've looked at using some product to replicate some ifs, and we've used it to use all criteria, which some ifs can't do. Next, let's look at how we can replace the count if function. So here I want to count the number of genres with prices under $20. And we don't need to aggregate any values from the table. We just want to count the results that return true. And that's going to mean a much simpler formula. So let's see some product. Now here we need to coerce the logical test into their numeric equivalents. And we use the double unary to do that. Open parentheses. We want to check whether the price is less than 20. Close parentheses on my logical test. Close some product and we get two. And that's it. Of course, you could add more logical tests with the multiplication sign for and or the plus sign for or. And if you did, you wouldn't need the double unary because we don't need to coerce the values. We've already got the math operation that's going to do that for us. Now that you know how to calculate a sum if and count if using some product, your homework is to put them together to calculate the average if. You'll find an example in the file download for this video. To recap and things to watch out for, use multiply between logical tests for AND criteria, use plus for OR criteria. If the OR criteria reference different columns, wrap the logical tests in the sign function to avoid double counting. If you only have one logical test, use the double unary to coerce the Boolean true and false values to their numeric equivalents. Each array referenced in a sum product must always be the same size. Text values included in arrays referenced by some product will be treated as zero. And some product can be resource intensive, especially with large data sets. So just take care. Now, if you're finding the logical tests a bit mind bending, an easier option and a great alternative to sum ifs, count ifs, average ifs, etc., are database functions, which are also more flexible than the ifs series of functions. So check out this video next. Thanks for watching.